Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Pillars of Eternity. I'm your host, Colors Fade. It's episode 57, and we're back in Cadnua. We have business to attend to here. We have peoples. We need to give Sagini a bow. Right. There's someone that we can hire here. There's Marsha. Ah, Lord Gathman's army grows. Do not ignore this threat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Farewell for now. Let's see what she has to say. I trust all is well. Please let me know if there's anything I can do to help. What is the state of the keep? Word of Cadnu is spreading far and wide. I expect we'll be receiving visitors from every corner of the world soon. Can't tell you how wonderful it is seeing the place restored. Great. So, near the deft hand, leaving in four days. Pay off, send escort. Pay off. Why do I have to pay him off? Send escort. Mm, okay. Let's send an escort. We'll send her. Double Karak can do that. Now, should have something being built. Finished in 17 hours. What else is this? Fellow of St. Widewin has arrived seeking employment. So we can do this. He's plus one and plus three. He's 400 and CP, 90 CP per day. That just seems absurd for the benefit that you're going to get. There's a mercenary mind striker. What's this little thing here mean? You can get him. You can get him for plus three and plus three for 20 CP a day. This seems broken. Why would you want... Why would you want that guy when you could get this? We'll hire him. Oh, this means the, these are people that you've hired. Okay. Cat, what are you doing? You just scare yourself? Cat just scared herself. Okay. May have to attend to whatever's going on there. So we have six of eight. We probably need to hire a couple more. We could get a blooded thug. See, I like the idea of getting... Plus one and plus one, but you could easily just go plus two with the crown and plus two in the other area. But we don't really have, a, we got an orderless disciple. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to hire that person for that. I mean, that's nice. This is security. This is prestige. I'm going to check real quick and see something. Okay, the thing I really wanted to see was when we need to take care of Gathbin, and there's no timer on this, apparently, even though it sounds urgent, so. That's cool. We'll go over here and take a look at our stuff. Let's just do all this. Grab all of that junk. Actually, I should probably sell a bunch of things to him. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, that's done. So what I really want to do now is leave so I can trade out, swap out a member. And in doing so, let's take a look at her stuff. She's empty. She's just got her goods here. Crypt multiplier bonus. Those gloves are going to want to come off at some point in time. Collection. Okay. <clears throat> Not real worried about that. Mm -hmm. The stones and the spirits in this place have begun to heal. Yes, they have. I'm wondering if I shouldn't try to do a little bit more of the endless paths. We might be able to work our way through some more character with her or the Devil of Karak. Well, let's try to leave for a second. What we're going to do is swap her out for strength. Sagini. We're going to accept, and then we're not going to go anywhere. Because what we want to do is give Sagini this bow. So, darling, this is going to be yours. What do you got for her? Got a fine dagger. And a fine hatchet. Hmm. Okay. I didn't really save anything like that, except there is this hearth harvest hatchet. So we'll do this. You can do this. There you go. Bind soul. Yep. You can have it. 
So now she's got that. Now we got to use her in combat to level that thing up, which we're not really going to worry about doing right now. Farewell. So I want to go back to her. Should we go back to the White March or should we try to do a little bit more of this? Let's do that this episode. Let's see what we can do here. Level one, level two, level three, level eight. Okay. Let's go level eight and see what happens. Maybe we can do a couple more levels of this. The fellow of St. Wideland leaves the stronghold. This gets us stairs, stairs. I think these are the stairs down. We'll see. Yes, fast mode, please. Move quickly. Cross the big hand. All right, my friends, let's go do some of this. We've got a second cipher. Let's see how this goes. It'll be kind of cool. All right, what do we have? Oh, nothing. Light, flame, and sound. Completely. We'll keep to ourselves. Undiscovered. Mr. Mangrum boy. What do we have here? The Audra has turned a dull shade of crimson. The entire section of it have crumbled away from the walls and the ceiling. Oh, really? This is looking like the very first in Gwythin Ruin we started the game in. There's something over here. Big square room here with some chains. Ooh. There's chains. Well, that's going to get me all kinds of excited. Okay. What's in here? Oh, that doesn't look fun. Oh, my. Okay. We probably only want one person going in there. Adair, do you think you can do it? Can you run in there, take a bunch of damage, and go grab these things, whatever they are? Yeah. Let's go see what he can grab. There's nothing in the cage. What about that one? No, nothing in there. There's somebody back here. What was that? What did he pick up? Oh, it went straight to the garbage can. Okay. This. What did you grab there, dude? A unique spear. Huh. That seems like a good weapon for Sigini to have, too. Anyway, I'm going to do this. Okay. Well then, I guess there's nothing else to do here. Yeah, you just need to get out of here. We got the weapon. God, dude, you are bleeding. Okay. Not good for Adair. Got a spear, though. That's cool. Is the spear a reach weapon? Amazingly, it's not. That is so bizarre. You'd think a spear would count as a reach weapon. Oh well. My thoughts will be as silent as my feet. Okay. My kitty cat. I got slimers. Well, let's fight the slime, shall we? I fought the slime and the slime one. What is this? I mean, blinded, dazed, frightened, prone, and terrified, which yeah. means that we can freeze it. So let's do. It. I'm ready. Do this. 
Smack it. Oh yeah, it dies pretty good, doesn't it? That died pretty good. Okay. Mm -hmm. We got ladies crying on the other side of this door. We got a lock pit. It. It's locked. You failed the lock pick. But I got I got lock open. picks. I don't understand. It says lock pick three and it mechanics twelve, lock pick one. So I can't get through here no matter what, because my mechanics aren't high enough. Okay, kids. Field trip's over. Time to go back to school. <laughs> uh, that's a good way to know whether you can go any further, I guess. They've put a locked door in front of you and like, yeah, oh, man. You'll never know about that. Okay. Well then, tell you what. I'm going to get us out of here. And we'll head back to the White March. We are back in Stalwart, and I'm going to ping the grieving mother because I think Your there's more to her conversation that we watcher. need to do. I said, I heard the name Watcher in your thoughts when you remember the birthing bell. Why? It is because I once believed I was one, and others believed I was one. Yeah. There's another name for someone with their abilities. This cipher does not define you any more than Watcher does diminishes the nature of who you are, dims the flame of thought and drive. Yet if it calms others to divine you in such a way, then comfort may be taken in that. That is a cloak as well that serves to dispel fear. Eight. Why do you believe you were a watcher? So. Yeah, we've kind of seen all of that before. Do you know anything about watchers? I feel that they were once marked, hated. Such hate feels dim now. I can feel it. Other hatreds have risen for other titles, but they burn bright in the past. Now, hates have shifted focus and they may fall in the same again, either you or me. So that is all we have for her. Okay. I thought maybe there might be more. Can you tell me about the birthing bell? It is where I could draw new souls into the world. I recall some of the memory of it through what you have seen. What did you do when the Hollowborn came? We have... We have seen all of this before. Upon the children. Yeah. Discuss something different. What's that you're wearing on your wrists? Birthing chimes were given to newborns. Why do you wear yeah. a set now? There is no child to carry it. Mm, I see. In your memory, they look like bones. And carry the weight of a hundred deaths. I know, Watcher. This is about the Hollowborn, isn't it? The Hollowborn. The Hollowborn have a future. They can be saved, and the Tells spoke of such. Hmm. How would you know? Have you seen this feature? They can be saved. They must be saved. You have seen the beauty in childbirth. What good came into the world there on the plateau. You helped me recall it. It is a memory we shared. It is the truth. In the memory, you hid the chimes on your wrist from your mother. From the mother. Why? It is not what I hid, but what she saw. She couldn't know. The grieving mother squeezes her eyes shut and brings her hands to her ears. No more equivocations. What really happened at the birthing bell? And what would you consider real, Watcher? The truth that was experienced and remembered? Or the one that burned out only to be swept under the rug and forgotten like ash from a fireplace? <laughs> what happened mattered. Forgetting it doesn't make it less real. And how much of your own life has been lost to the error of memory? How many loves and betrayals were colored with the false hues of emotion? A pity to wonder how much of your own life happened the way you recall. We should get going again. Alright, so that advanced the quest. Good. Apparently that was where we needed to go. Dream and memory. Okay, so... I pressed her and she became evasive. I know there's more to the story, but I may have to spend more time with her. So now we're back and need just to spend time with her. Okay. So in terms of the other quest with the wolf, the wolf was in the russet wood, apparently. So we're going to go there. I don't know how we missed it. I thought we cleared the whole entire russet wood. Or, or no, maybe, maybe we just need to go back. Let's take a look at that. The hunter's favor. Wolf makes its lair in the area, though has not been able to determine the den's location. 
Is it up here then, maybe somewhere? Russet Wood Crater, Hunter's Camp, Bandit Camp. There's some black stuff there. It's got to be up here somewhere. Sure. Okay. We just missed it beforehand. We missed something about this whole deal. There's some booties. Move speed. Oh, what's this? Pushing a flame shield. Oh. You grab those. Who gets the boots? You're not wearing any booties. You, what are you wearing for boots? Consecrated ground and hit by a critical hit. That's why you got to have those. Yeah, sure. You can wear these boots. You moving faster won't be a bad thing. Is this it? Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, back this way. Everybody off. Go this way. Okay, now we got everybody engaged. Yeah. I'm gonna switch to Pike. I'm going to try to mez a winter wolf over here. Maybe that one. You can freeze that one. What? Give everybody their offense. Hit that thing with your range, and yeah, you can't switch weapons. Well. Dare slash. Okay, Pelagina, you get to slash at something. Slash at that thing. Can you whisper of treason this? Hmm. and get to where we need to get here. Okay. Take your bow, sister, and shoot. This thing. Or that thing. Doesn't really matter. I have enough points here. I don't have enough points. I gotta get... There we go. Sh attack this. Pelagina, attack this. Now I have enough points, I can do this. There we go. Durance, get up here, do this. There we go. Wolves. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're looking at something that looks like... Oh, there's the cave. Okay, we're here at the Winter Wolf. We can take care of this quest. That'd be good. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm not really a fan of these quests that are like, keep spending a whole bunch of time with your companion. Yeah, but I, I want to swap people in and out and actually do the quest. That's why I like Sagini's quest, because it's really about specific locations. You don't have to keep spending time with her in your party. I wish more of them worked like that. Oh, here we go. Bring down your query. Well, 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 the druid wolf, standing tall amongst the wolves inhabiting the cavern, the creature turns to face you as you venture forward. Scores of wounds and scars riddle its hide, and one dull eye stares out blindly from its skull. It growls a threat as you approach, one echoed by its fellows. At the creature's feet lie two villagers, one heavily wounded, the other holds an arm across his stomach, and he looks up at you with pleading in his eyes. Help! Please help us! As the beast turns its head back towards the hunter, you sense a strange aura emanating from it. It's as if its hide were holding in a tempest of soul essence, fierce and all-consuming as flame. Reach out for the beast's soul. It takes little effort before the beast's soul threatens to overwhelm you with its intensity. Wrath and hunger buffet you on all sides until you reach through the storm to find a smaller, 
dimmer pulse of light. They are swept headlong into a memory. The chill bites into your cheeks and your lungs burn a little from the run. You look down at the little wooden carving in your hand and run your thumb along the edge of the carved bear's spine. The totem has already brought you luck. You found two rabbits in as many snares, and that's a rare enough feat these days. You're certain now that this was a gift from Galloway, and that you were meant to find it on that lonely shrine and take it. Soldier. Your father's voice snaps you out of your reflections, and you rush forward to rejoin him beside the campfire. You brandish the hairs and catch a glimpse of a rare smile under his graying beard. But the smile disappears almost immediately as a shadow falls over you both. You feel the rush of wind a moment before the log comes crashing down and roll out of the way just in time. You hear your father cry out in pain somewhere nearby. Both the hares and the totem slip from your grasp. You can feel power surging within you. Your heart thunders in your chest, but instinct pulls your senses into order and you feel the familiar stretch of limbs a sudden dizzying shift in height, but something is wrong. Your senses are fading rather than growing stronger. There's a howling in your head, like a screaming chorus, and everything in you shrieks for you to bite, to tear, to eat. The memory slips from you, and when you come back to yourself, the beast is shaking its head as if to clear an itch clawing at its ears. Soldrin. The creature snaps and snarls, evidently uncomprehending, and edges toward the nearest hunter even as it watches you balefully with its single eye. Throw a torch as a distraction. You fling a torch at the beast and it gives a sharp yelp as the torch bounces off its hide with a burst of embers. The beast leaps away from the hunter, stumbling in its panic, but the wolves search forward, snarling. All right, let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Adair, I need you up here. Yeah, take that thing. Well, you're going to attack this. At uh, least for the moment before I can go in here and charm it. Hmm? Get everybody on offense. I'm ready. You attack this thing. Your thoughts must flow deep. You are also deep. going to start charming. I want you to just Whoa. rush over here. Yeah, that f that quickness is going to be awesome. Charm that thing. There we go. Now you are going to attack this thing. Yeah. I am going to charm something else. Maybe that one. Okay. Now, grieving mother, switch to your pokies and poke this thing. Yeah. I am going to do... Eh, what am I going to do? Let's attack this and steal some defenses from it. There we go. You're going to try to freeze this thing. Adair, why don't you try to knock this thing down? Karzig's over well. there. He's going to light it up. Uh. I'm going to try to... Do I need to freeze this? No, it's almost dead. Keep attacking. Uh. Oh my god. Killed the cars that killed the druid wolf. Oh my god, he just decimated it. Cars that flames of devotion. He crits the druid wolf with the apprentice sneak attack. Oh my god, that was awesome. Uh. Okay. Disintegration. <laughs> I'm pulling that up. Sister. Petrify it. Oh, we, I didn't even get disintegration off. Well, there we go. There's that. Right. Wounded hunters. Bless you, stranger. We'll make our way back to the village. I thought we were done for. 
Yes. Keeping an eye out. Keeping an eye out. I'm looking for any loot way back here. Yay. Okay, what is this? Kurok's brand. Unique wand, too. What? Kurok was an Adiran noble in Raid Saras who owned 600 acres of Vorlis fields. He considered himself a pious man, and his neighbors and tenant farmers knew him for his fervent devotion to Wodica. He labored alongside his tenants and kept meticulous records of production and sales. Yet he was also known for his pitiless temper and his ruthlessness with shirkers. He carried a switch with him and would savagely thrash any worker he caught dwaddling or lagging. Yet he was a favorite of the imperial governor and so his excesses were overlooked. One day, Wideone approached him while he was doling out an especially savage beating. Wideone, fresh from his encounter with Aethys, demanded that Kirok release his victim. When the lord refused, Wideone asked what the tenant farmer had done to deserve such treatment. He can neglect his duties in the field, Kirok replied. Every day he gathers less, yet still he enjoys the protection of my estate. Is it any wonder that your harsh treatment of the man would render him unable to fulfill his duties? Let him enjoy a week of rest. He will return to your service renewed, said Wideone. Kirok sneered. You would reward his indolence? It is my right and my responsibility to discipline him for his errors. What authority gave you such power over this man? Widewood asked. Wodica, the oath binder. It is she who set me above the farmer and his lord, an employer, and her order that I serve and discipline you. Widewood persisted. Does not the quiet winter beget the fruitful spring? Is it by Aeothus's clemency that we enjoy a rebirth in each new life and restoration with each morning? And it is Aeothus' season that blesses your fields. I say to you again, release this man. In his fury, Kurok turned on wide when his switch raised to strike, yet the rod grew suddenly hot in his hand. He cried out, and as he held the rod, it ignited. The flame that gushed forth blinded him instantly, scarring his face in the manner of the burned queen. Kirak dropped the smoldering rod and fled to tell the governor of what he had witnessed. Well, the only person who could use that right now is him, but he's, uh, he, for role-playing reasons, he would certainly not want to use it. He's like, no way, I'm, I'm a priest of Magrin. What does it do, though? I didn't even look. Fast, pierced, burn damage, that's nice. 10% chance to cast Combusting Wounds on hit. Almost seems like it would fit him though and it grants Fireball one per rest. That seems like something that fits you, dude. <laughs> that seems very fitting, Kirox, but I might have to switch him to that instead of this. Plus it's a fast weapon. Let's do this. Let's try this out for a little bit. He is the burner after all. What do we have up here? Stuff. Generic stuff. Okay. Well, there's the wolf. Nice. The druid wolf. Dead. As dead as they will get. Well then. That sets us back to home. Alrighty then. We need to take this to... Thrisk's house. do that Maneha is there we, she's another person we can recruit <laughs> yet another party member that we possibly can't accommodate because we've got too many ongoing quests oh so funny okay Risk. watch yourself on the mountain in these lean times everything looks like prey to something I found the wolf of yours. I see. Is it done? Is is he dead? Yeah, he's dead. Then it is done at last. Thank you, stranger. I can't say I ever hoped this day would come, but it was inevitable. The spirit shifter. Did you know him? He was my son. Once. Uh, your son? Yes. He is... He was my son. It was a cruel trick of the gods to give him a gift that brought him such joy and then to twist it. 
He was killing villagers. It wasn't any other way. Difficult as it must have been, you did what you had to. The people of Stalwart are that much safer for it. You've brought me what peace the gods will allow me. This served me well in my younger days, and I hope that it will do the same for you. Cloak of the Frozen Hunt. Range damage, accuracy against beasts, and damage reduction. Wow. Okay. What are you wearing, Mogram boy? Defense against spells. Yeah, you might be better off at that. You're going to be doing all the range damage. Okay. The cross I added, the quest expires in two days. Well then, we'll take a look at our quests here and see what we can do next or if we should just go straight to Durgan's Battery. But there was one other thing I wanted to try out. The crossed eye. Okay. Supplicant leaving in two days, 19 hours. Minus four, if ignored, minus four princesses. Zero security for three days. Minor reputation with twin elms negative. Pay off or send escort. All right, we'll send an escort. Sagini, go. The crossed eye. Average item, major item. Hmm. Okay, who are we going to send for that? Aloth, you need experience, so why don't you do it? There we go. The group is busy. Now, Maneha. She's down there. Well, let's take a look at our quests. Rayfold is desperate for a taste of... Oh, yeah. Well, we might do that. The Devil of Karak, which we need to do. The Grey Sleeper, we've learned... Another verse. Discover how you got or died. Okay, that's the big cave where I think the big ice dragon is. So we can't do anything about that for a while. Um, can't do anything about grieving mother for a while until she just pops the next quest thing. Tregel traveled to Craigholt to invest the conflict console hut. That's a tough one. Okay, the long hunt. Master below. Trials of Dorance. Time and tide find the ruins and beneath Cadnu and travel with it air. So there's not much we can do except for Durgan's battery. So I think we should go do that. Let's figure out where we're going here. All right, Durgan's battery. We should be able to make some progress here. We should be able to get inside. Should be kind of nice. Where do we need to go again? Right up here. To the battery. Can I stop the battery? Battery! What are you folks doing? Get over there. That'll take you to the russet wood. Yeah, get over here. Speed mode. Let's go, folks. The lesser the man, the greater the things he builds to compensate for it. Okay. And though the wind and the ice have pried long, jagged cracks in the walls, the doors feel as solid and as cold as a glacier. Gilded panels are arranged in columns along the doors, though most depict scenes from daily life. Dwarves chiseling at tunnel walls. Hmm, okay. One pane at eye level catches your attention. It's a relief showing a crenellated wall and above it, an indentation in the shape of an anvil. Place the anvil tile in the relief. The anvil tile fits perfectly in your impression. You feel a warm thrum in your fingertips as you snap it into place. Okay. We have this, so we have to go look for it. So I did a really nice thing, and I saved this last episode as the can tech of Durgan's battery. So it becomes really easy to recall it. A lot of times I save the names of episodes based on characters that you meet, like the Devil of Karak or uh, Galvino's Workshop. But I did something different, and I'm so glad that I did, because it was really easy to look up. Hammers of Durgan Ring Loud, that's the first one. 
Okay, distantly hear the melodic chime of metal on metal and the low chorus of a work song. Oh, and now we have to, st okay, strike the anvil relief. As you do, a singing ringing tone whistles through the air. Your hand buzzes and vibrates like struck metal. When you look back at the leaf, the panels on either side of the wall and anvil have come alive. Ogres and warriors of all races gather for battle, their shapes and silhouettes formed by flaring world heat patterns. The tiny figures move and dance, animated by the flicker and blaze of an unseen fire. Walls of the battery safeguard our works. Marauder and wilder life. You hear the heavy thud of some kind of mechanism loosening behind the plaque. Okay. Strike the warriors. The buzz of essence fade and the relief reverts to its original state. Okay, so this. Strike the anvil. That. Pr push the crenellation wall relief. It slides easily with the slightest pressure from your fingers. You guide it up and over the anvil relief where it clicks into place. Beneath it is a deep cavity, a shape like a dragon's gaping jaws. Hammers of Durgan ring loud. May the anvil's deep music resound. The relief reverts to its original state. Okay. Hammers. Strike the anvil. Walls. Press the panel. Reverts. Hammer. Strike the anvil. Walls. Push the crenellated wall relief. Walls of the battery. That's oh, so it's moving them around. Abidin's faithful is the line. Okay, so it's moving them around. All right. Warm air gusts from the open mouth, tingling your cold, numbed face. Um, examine the mouth more closely. Stick your weapon in the mouth. The relief reverts to the same. Hammers of Durgan ring loud. May the animal's deep music resound. Strike the anvil relief. Walls of the battery safeguard our works from marauders and wilder alike. Push the crenellated wall relief. Abedin's faithful travail by the forge and the fires that brighten the ore. Stick your finger into the cavity. Oh, reverts. Okay. Hammers of Durgan ring loud. May the anvil's deep music resound. Strike the anvil relief. Walls of the battery safeguard our works from Marauder and Wilder alike. Push the crenellated wall relief. Abaddon's faithful travail by the forge and the fires that brighten the ore. No, it's walls of the battery. No, it's evidence. Okay. And then examine the mouth more closely. The heat billowing from the mouth prevents you from getting too close, but the rim of the cavity and the tiny teeth surrounding it are... Blackened with soot, you accidentally inhale some of the vapor. It's odorless, but it leaves you lightheaded. You also notice that the dragon's tongue is a fire striker. It's hinged and attached to a chunk of flint. Hmm. Press the dragon's tongue to light a fire in the mouth. Fire catches the warm vapor with a billowing whoosh. The dragon's eyes are alight, and the flames lick at the edges of its mouth. A few seconds later, the panel is sliding away from you, as two enormous doors swing open into a grand hall. At last, we have it. And inward we will go to Durgan's Battery next episode. Folks, thanks for watching. Tweak that algorithm, give the video a like, leave a comment. Ask a question. Tell me how your own playthrough of Pillars of Returning is going, and I'll see you next time. Until then, happy gaming, everyone.